Hey guys, I know you all want to know what we're doing today. Right, Renny? Well, today we're going to be working on our collage and we're going to be looking at some different collages to decide what works and how we can make ours better. We're going to start out by looking at one from one of our fourth grade students. Um, this is going to be sideways, but if you notice, some things that I feel are successful in it are it takes up most of the space. There's not very much extra white space around and when you look closely you see how many different layers and different textures are on. This is one green thing. There's one, two, three, four different types of green papers. Same for the little red and orange flower. There's three different things here and even the brown there's extra browns layered on. So different colors and textures and filling up the space work really well for that one. This one's also unfinished, but they've gotten to a great start with this walrus. He again takes up a large part of the space. He contrasts really well with the background. If he was white, a white polar bear maybe, he wouldn't show up as well against this white paper, so the artist might have to outline him to make that show up. But the contrast here is really nice. And then this one isn't layered as um, stacked as much as the other one, but what works for it are the several different types of browns all on here. It look really cool. Um, okay, let's look at a couple other ones. This one, uh, first of all, it's all the way filled up. Um, it's got a lot of textures. It's not really layered and stacked like the cactus, but it's got a lot of different textures. And it has a focal point. The singer is in warm colors and the background is in cool colors. So that makes that pop. This one, um, it doesn't have any texture or pattern paper, but what's going well for this one is all the different layers and stacks, kind of like, and all the different types of lines that are cut out. There's wavy, there's smooth, you know, there's in between. So that is working for this. And again, he takes up most of the space on the background. To make this one even better, um, I could color a background for him. On this one, the thing that is kind of neat about it is adding the markers, adding the markers on top of the paper. So you guys can think about that when you're doing yours. Do you want to add markers? Do you want to add stacks and stacks of things? Do you want to find textured and patterned paper to layer on top of each other? And you guys can add incorporate more coloring too. This is a cool one that you could do something similar with um, these shapes are all cut out and added onto, and this looks like it's painted on, and the, um, the rainstorm looks like it's painted and crayons. And we're not gonna use paint, but you can use crayons. You can collage some things on, and then if you feel like it's too much white space, you can draw a background around it. When you're done, remember to stack things in the drying rack. Make sure your name is on it. When you're cleaning up your bins, try to get them as close to this as you can with your paper stacked nicely, your scissors on one side, your glue on the other side. All the crinkled up things that aren't really working anymore can go to recycle. If you have larger pieces left over, they can go back to the pattern box, the cool color box, and the warm color box. And again, you can use crayons to add to yours.